Welcome to a special episode of Shit Island, where we'll be covering the American election Democratic candidates, the lesser known ones this time. And then also at the very end, a very special Danish election coverage uh, segment by, well, me. I'll be talking a bit about the Danish election and the stuff that uh, I think we can deduce out of it and the analysis we can use internationally and take away from the uh, nightmare world that I'm currently living in. So, Shit Island, how are you two doing? Great. I'm doing well. Actually, no, I'm pretty tired, but... <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah, yeah. so we got a, a special lineup today. We have some nobodies. Uh, we've got some <laughs> more nobodies, but we've got a few people whose names you might actually recognize. Can I, can I just bring up an example of how, how much of nobodies these people are? Oh, please. So one of the uh, candidates that I have is Michael Bennett. Mm-hmm. Just a show of hands. Who here has ever heard of Michael Bennett <laughs> before? Just, sh- just raise your hand. <laughs> when you Google Michael Bennett, um, he doesn't come up. <laughs> when you Wikipedia Michael Bennett, there must be at least 20 people that are called Michael Bennett. Mm. There's a boxer, there's a cricketer, a cyclist, a defensive lineman, a run back, a wide receiver, rugby league wrestler. And then there are, there's a film director, a theater, writer, book series. There are Lots of people. people in politics, right? So Michael okay, John that's... Bennett, 1860 to 1944, and Michael S. Bennett, born in 1945, who's a Florida state senator. That's not this Michael Bennett. No, no, no. <laughs> the candidate for president is not listed under politics. He's listed under C also. Ah, oh, that's... Ooh. So you scroll down. The C also category... Uh, and then in, in uh, under C also, you find Michael Bennett, born 1964, U.S. Senator from Colorado, former superintendent of the Denver Public School System. He's not even under, oh, jeez. That's the perfect description of these candidates. It's the C also yeah. candidates. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that characterizes this uh, batch, the ones we're doing today, pretty well. Yeah. Well, most of them. I don't want to scare anyone off. We do have some names you might recognize. And it's always the least known ones that are the most fun, because they're the wackiest ones and the ones that will get into <laughs> the most trouble saying dumb shit. Oh, uh, yeah, and no, I got one who's uh, not doing well, let's put it that way. So, yeah, who, who wants to start with uh, one of their candidates? I'd like to start, because okay. I feel like I have the perfect opening candidate. Okay, then. We have to do a little preparation work before we begin with her. So I, I think we should all just take a deep breath in and out. <coughs> okay, okay. So <clears throat> I have, and I'd like to introduce you all if you don't know of her, Marianne Williamson. I do not know of her. She is possibly the funniest candidate that I've come across. And not for the reasons you'd think. She's kind of like the Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Phil candidate of the election because she's a self-help guru and she's written Mm. seven number one New York Times bestselling self-help books uh, about how we need to find our spiritual core in the dynamics of our society again. And uh, the most famous one she wrote was called A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of a Course in Miracles. And she's, she's kind of, she, she's one of those candidates that wants us to open our third eye and see not just each other and the world, but kind of the universe in a bigger perspective. And I'd really like to see her debating Trump and, and him going, you're weak, you're, you know, delusional. And her just going, Trump, sir, I forgive you. Because <laughs> she seems like the type of person that would do that, that would just let everything just flow right through her chakras and just kind of go, you know what? It's fine. We'll all be fine. We just need to, we just need to, can, can I give you a hug, Mr. President? <laughs> <laughs> she's that kind of person. Um, oh, my, that's going to be fun. Yeah, and she, she's, um, she's launched, uh, uh, co- she, she, she hosts some conferences called Sister Giant, where she um, just basically like that political thing that we covered with the candidates She hosts some talks with prominent women, like girl boss type people, and Mm. gets them to talk about how they were empowered to become girl bosses and like how other girls can become girl bosses in their lives. I think we're um, going to uh, talk about one such girl boss in uh, in a moment, actually. Yeah, the main girl boss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And her slogan is join the evolution. 
So she wants to, she doesn't want to see this as kind of uh, a thing that changes everything radically or drastically, but just kind of something that comes naturally and the spiritual evolution of mankind. And uh, mm. on her website, it says that she wants a co-creative effort, an effort of love and a gift of love to our country <clears throat> and hopefully to our world. <laughs> um, okay. okay. She wants to be a world leader. Mm. So she is really just the definition of a wine mom who's had enough of <laughs> yeah. people saying they're dummies. Dude, she's like fucking. She's like Jill Stein. She is. Yeah, ah, she's like Jill beautiful. Stein. Yeah. If you, if she was, if Jill Stein had been in like a, a Sade type band or an Enya type band instead of a girl rock band when she was young. <laughs> That's kind of who she is. Uh, and final thing, in terms of policy, she she doesn't really strike me as someone that cares all that much about politics. Yeah. But the stuff she has said has been pretty straightforward, like progressive, democratic, liberal. She wants a fifteen dollar minimum wage, Medicare for all. She wants uh, some stricter gun control. But really, what we should take away from her is that she really wants us to open our chakras and be nicer <laughs> to each other and to hug each other some yeah. more. That's the kind of candidate Marianne Williamson is. Mm. I mean, I can support I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, we need more mindfulness in politics. Yeah, I think yep. so. More wine mums. <clears throat> more wine mums in exactly. politics. <laughs> well, that's, uh, she certainly sounds like a fascinating character. I assume she'll do very well. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're ruining her chakra here. Come on. Oh, I'm st you're right. All you're the so right. negative energy. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm I'm ruining everything with my uh, with my anti enlightenment uh, thinking. I know, right? It's fucking ridiculous. Shame on you. Uh, so who wants to go next? I can do um, Seth Moulton. Sure. Okay. Well. Do either of you have either of you heard of him before? <laughs> Yeah, I was about to ask the audience, who here has heard of Seth Moulton? Because I've never heard of this name. Yeah, he... Um... I forgot this name even existed when I was making this list. <laughs> like the list of like all the fucking 27 candidates we're going to be talking about uh, throughout this uh, thing. Well, not all today, but you know. He became a... Uh, was it a corporal or something? No, a captain uh, during the Iraq War. Mm -hmm. he he's just one of those really Republican Democrats, you know? Like, he's mm. a member of the Democrat mm. Party, but he might as well be a member of the Republican Party. I think, if uh. not for his social views. Uh, so he's a member of the New Democrat Coalition. Right, the Clinton side. Yeah, Ooh, sure. Dear. Uh, and if you look at them on Wikipedia, their ideology is cultural liberalism, fiscal conservatism, third way. Ah, oh, God. The Tony Blair... Bill yeah. Clinton Bill type. Clinton, yeah. Ah, oh, God, it's terrible. Uh, he's like a fist... He, he promotes... Um, uh, what is he called? Fiscal responsibility. Uh, he he describes himself as moderate and pro growth, <laughs> which is ah oh, god, <laughs> one of the weirdest things. Like, yeah, I'm pro growth. I'm not. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I'm pro recession personally. I want you know. <laughs> I want a great depression. Yeah, remember the great recession of like ten years ago? I want that again. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I think generally speaking, we can say that Seth Moulton, he, uh, economically, fiscally, he's basically a Republican, but in terms of social issues like marijuana and, uh, same-sex marriage, abortion, gun control, he's, uh, he's a Democrat, or he's, like, more liberal. He, um, likened Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. Wow, hashtag woke. Would he still <laughs> vote for him, though? Because, I mean, Kasich, <laughs> if anyone remembers fucking Kasich from, like, the last uh, Republican primary. Do I compared, remember Kasich? <laughs> yeah, anyway, he Who compared doesn't? Trump to Hitler, and then was immediately also, would you still vote for him? And it was like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean yeah, well, yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> so, okay, just compared the guy to Hitler, but, you know, I'd still vote for him. Like, yeah. If you want to see the saddest thing on YouTube, go check out his video where he addressed the uh, Notre Dame disaster, where he's standing on some very depressing parking spot by a mall, sweating profusely with a, 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 an iPhone <laughs> camera right up his nose, saying, um, it's really bad that this church burned down, and I don't like when things burn down, and I hope you're all safe, and uh, take care. It's so depressing. He looks like oh, he's about to, he's doing a suicide note in video form. <laughs> 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 oh jeez anyway Seth Moulton uh, he's a moderate democrat although he calls himself a progressive democrat for some reason but I don't really know what mm -hmm. he's progressive on that's a word that doesn't mean anything anymore yeah, yeah. 
Uh, interestingly, he was endorsed by Elizabeth Warren for some reason. Huh. For president? For uh, the general election. Interesting. Okay. Uh, you mean, uh, was he a senator? You mean in that race? or? He is a member of the House of Representatives for the Massachusetts 6th District. Oh, well, okay. So, so probably he was running against some super regressive Massachusetts against, like, Republican. A Republican. Then, yeah, I imagine. Possible, yeah. Because uh, Warren's not exactly a fiscal conservative. Well, she has a past as a Republican. She was like a Republican until five, six years ago. Really? Mm. I think yeah. so. Uh, she was. I'll, I'll look into her. She's on uh, my list for uh, next time, anyway. Yeah. Cool. Also, um, he. Uh, was one of the leaders who failed to prevent Nancy Pelosi from becoming Speaker of the House. Oh, that old thing, yeah. Yeah, he didn't want her to be Speaker of the House. I think uh, also important to note, uh, under foreign policy, he um, he did oppose sending uh, US troops back to Iraq in 2014, and he opposes Trump's plan to deploy troops in Iran, but he's not anti-interventionist like Tulsi Gabbard it would be, for, ex- for instance. Right, he just doesn't think this war is fun. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. think wars in general, pretty good. Fine. This one, maybe not, because this is the one that he's actually been to. Yeah, exactly. But right. if it's a war in you know Asia or something, then he can't relate. Those wars might be fun. Yeah, who knows? He's not going to yeah, survive. Who, who doesn't remember the Vietnam War? I mean, come on, great music from that time period. True. I mean, you know, if, Could you imagine all those movies we wouldn't have had if we didn't go to Vietnam? Yeah, I mean, that's my main <laughs> reason for supporting the Vietnam War, to be honest. Just all the cinema that came out of it was just brilliant. Yeah. There must be some kind of way out of here. And then helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no, great. I mean, you as a film school guy, uh, you know, you should know. <laughs> People are still making <laughs> Vietnam-style movies. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How'd they? Yeah. In, ah. in, in film school because it's so effective and you can make an, a Jesus allegory very easily if you use Vietnam as a backdrop oh, I suppose so I'm yeah. disappointed I didn't remake uh, Apocalypse Now and set in Iraq because you know they could have done that I think one last thing about Seth Moulton when asked if he would uh, in order to balance the budget if he would support uh, an income tax increase on any tax bracket any one of them pick and choose mm. and he said no None of them. Uh, none of them. Wow. Not even the poor. It wouldn't even the poor. It wouldn't Jesus. even tax the poor. What a monster. Fucking hell. Well, this guy doesn't have my vote, I can tell you that. Yeah. So he is the essence of fiscally conservative and socially liberal. Which uh, is a theme that will go through a lot of these no-name candidates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the the uh, fiscally conservative in quotes, in yeah. brackets, yeah. Uh, well, I got a no name here, which is not fiscally conservative, but still can, yeah. So, uh, I have Joe Sandberg here. Which one of you has ever heard of Joe Sandberg? I've heard of him, but honestly, I I'll couldn't pick him out of a, st- of a lineup. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm amazed you even heard of him. I'm amazed you even heard of him. So, uh, this guy, well, he hasn't fully declared yet, I should know. This is one of the three people I have who has enough name recognition to have been mentioned on uh, on Wikipedia as potential candidates. Mm. And this Ooh. is one of them. Uh, he's a uh, multi-millionaire investor. Uh, Hell yeah. He's uh, from a Jewish working class background. Shalom. So, uh, yeah, shalom indeed. Uh, he invests in like, a couple of companies, uh, Blue Apron, Aspiration Incorporated. Uh, Blue Apron is a home food delivery thing. Blue Apron fucking sponsors like a million podcasts. Yeah, that's true. They're not sponsoring this one, though, but uh, maybe they will one day. So, Blue Apron, fucking great company, by the way. (laughs) Just saying, throwing it out there. They also have notoriously terrible working conditions. Yeah, uh, there's that. They've been sued multiple times. There's that as well, but, you know... I'm open to some blue blue apron money. I'm just throwing I wouldn't. it out there. Honestly, <laughs> ah, I wouldn't. Fine with it. <laughs> well, well, Fuck let's, let's blue apron. <laughs> okay, let, let's just say we would have to take a vote on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Take okay. The money. We'll, we'll have some behind the scenes things. Yeah. Um. Let's see. There's the uh, Aspiration Incorporator, which is an online banking thing. Um. Ivy.com, which is a social university, and there's actually one of them which is all around the world, and there's even one in Stockholm, so uh, huh. have fun, guys. I'm good, thanks. I don't really know what they do, it seems not to be an actual university, more of like a 
art community thing where you can take art classes and go to museums and shit. Which, huh. okay, cool, I guess. You could just uh, go to museums on my own. <laughs> uh, you could do that as well, but, you know, if you don't feel like being there on your own and you want some pretentious people to hang out with while you, you know, look at some old paintings... You won't get a certificate from going to the mu- museum by yourself. That's true. Tr- that's probably <laughs> true, yes. <laughs> I won't get a diploma to put on my wall. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah some internet university. Online University of Baghdad. <laughs> yeah. That's where I got hmm. my degree. I should do that one time, yeah. Uh, and see, uh, the last thing uh, he did was uh, he made or supports some organization which helps people get uh, their earned income tax credits in uh, California. So, uh, yay, I guess. Uh, that's his professional background, anyway. As for his politics, he's, uh, he supports um, Bernie's Medicare for All thing, the Green New Deal, he wants some more corporate regulations, expanding food stamps, and uh, the Medicaid program, which... Uh, provides uh, medical assistance to people within 133% of the poverty line. And his main stick is that uh, he's a business owner, but he also supports these progressive policies because he thinks they will be good for the economy. And he's also not a socialist. He wants you to know that he is not a socialist. He very much emphasizes (laughs) that he is not a socialist. He's a business owner. So he's like those girls in 90s rom-com movies that's like, I'm a girl, but I also like baseball. Yes, exactly. It's like, what? <laughs> yep. You're a business owner and progressive? I know, it's fucking shocker. But uh, well, I support some good policies anyway, so yay. But hmm. He's also, you know, mm, mm, come on. Mm. But there's also internally in the Democratic Party a big discussion of what Medicare for all means. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah. That is true. We'll, for some, uh, it means uh, European-style access to hospitals. For others, it means uh, ec- um, what do they call it? Like uh, affordable access yeah. to Medicare. So you'd still have to pay to get on Medicare, but maybe not as much as you're currently paying. Yeah, I mean that—that's like affordable healthcare, like affordable Medicare. That's exactly what Obamacare is. Essentially, but also it would um, if you got access to Medicare, you would have more of a blanket access to all of the um, medical uh, institutions, whereas Obamacare, you can be on Obamacare and basically not be insured at all. It'll only Mm -hmm. cover like 20% of all medical insurance prices. Uh, But if it's Medicare, it would cover all of them for a fee. So it would still be like a step up from what we have today, but it it can be a big step up where everyone has equal access or it can be just like a tiny step up where people still have to pay a ton of money uh, and premiums uh, for slightly better access, but not all that much better. Yeah, yeah. I got two other candidates here who uh, say they support Medicare for all, but then how they define that is kind of vague. So yeah. uh, exactly, we'll, yeah. we'll show those <laughs> issues coming up uh, yeah. with the other candidates. My my absolute lad of a man, Mike Gravel, hey. supports publicly funded universal health care, and he has done so since two thousand and six. Gravel. Oh, yeah. Gravel. Sorry. I yeah, call him Gravel. Gravelange. The Gravel Man. Gravel Man. Gravelange, come on. I call him Gravel because it's just more fun. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Gravel Hell sounds yeah. so woo. Sounds Gravel. very French. And I think he actually is Quebecois French. <laughs> yeah, but, fucking yeah. French. Sweet. Anyway, Peter, your candidate. Oh, yeah. My second candidate is, uh, let's see, Swalwell. What's mm. his first name again? Hold on. Eric. <laughs> Eric, I think. <laughs> Eric, Eric Swalwell. Swalwell. Hell yeah. Um, I have no idea who he is. <laughs> have you seen Back to the Future? Yeah. Yes. It's like if Biff from Back to the Future ran for office, the bully guy, who's always nice. like, McFly, <laughs> and giving him a nookie and stuff. That's, that's Eric Swalwell. He is, yeah. He's so f- like right-wing economically that he's been endorsed by multiple Republican newspapers in Oof. his own state. And people Oof. in both in the Republican Party and Democratic Party have accused him of being a Tea Party candidate. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> he, dear. Yeah. He got into <laughs> office in 2011 when uh, just following the terrible hit, uh, the historically terrible hit that the Democrats got in the 2010 midterm elections after Obama was elected, oh, where yeah. they lost like a third Everything. of all the people in power. Yeah, because mm-hmm. of Obamacare. But he got in. Because he, he appealed to that Tea Party candidate thing where he, he said stuff like, I'm going to hold Obama to 
to task for his socialist policies and stuff. <laughs> but he, but he's he's a he's known as like a terrible bully within the the party. But also, of course, because the Democrats are awful, he's also a favorite among like the neoliberal top of the party. And he has worked very closely with Nancy Pelosi and Obama yeah. from Congress. He's been kind of one of Obama's favorite sons, like Buttigieg who we'll also be talking about uh, later. So he was one of those people that was like, oh, he's the future. He's the the future of the Democratic Party. He's the guy that's going to lead us into the next century, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And uh, I mean, he's extremely reactionary on, I want to say like 90% of everything. He does, if you you think, (laughs) if you can think of anything that Bernie Sanders has said, he probably hates it or doesn't mention it. And uh, the, the most notable thing that I found was that he doesn't even mention reproductive rights in any part of his oh, campaign material. Geez. And when people started this whole online campaign, which, you know, I have my problems with, but still this campaign against Alabama's new uh, reproductive rights assault, where uh, they, they take away a lot of the um, abortion rights that the state has had since the 70s, he, he went out to the media and said that he didn't think it was productive to curse Alabama and said instead people should maybe give to charities because criticism isn't progressive. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> he literally said that. He said criticizing stuff, that just isn't progressive. We need to stand together and, and not choose hate <laughs> of people that want to take away our civil rights, but instead just like like almost in a, in a Marianne Williamson kind of way, hug them, hug them until they feel better and maybe maybe don't try to take away all our rights. No, no, I feel like <clears throat> if I'm going to touch them in any way, it's going to be more, you know, instead of a hug, more of a punch to the face because fuck these people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is, he is very much uh, like in the molten uh, category of very right-wing Democrats, but he, he does love to portray himself as this relatable, down to the ground, like just moderate centrist, I can, you know, get America back to work kind of guy. Oh, he's, like, he's like John Kerry is a good example. Like he's just so middle of the road, doesn't talk about policies when he's on stage, but is so reactionary on everything oh, that it almost hurts. Yeah, no, yeah. for my candidates, I didn't even mention whether any of them uh, like uh, in favor of like abortion rights because they all are in favor and so it's not really worth mentioning. There's one who doesn't even do that. Jesus, fuck. There are a <laughs> few. There are a few that just don't mention rep- reproductive rights or women's rights in any of their uh, of their um, st- uh, uh, policy plans. Another one that I also have who doesn't is Hickenlooper. Huh. Hickenlooper doesn't mention it either and neither oh, does... Uh, Tim Ryan, who's also running, they, n- none of those three mention abortion rights or women's rights or uh, anything to do with identity politics, as they call it. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine all uh, at least mention that. At least, I mean, they don't, two of them don't really touch much on it, but at least say like uh, yeah, pro-choice, whatever. It's, yeah, they at least do that, it's like the bare minimum. <laughs> even Klobuchar oh. is pro-choice. <laughs> well, fuck, even Klobuchar. Yeah. Yeah, the Slay Queen. Hashtag Slay Queen. Mm-hmm. Let's get it trending, people. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> also tag with Shit Island because, you know, get some of that traffic going our yeah. way. <laughs> Shit Island endorses the Slay Queen. <laughs> Whee! Hell yeah. All right. Well, any, any other thoughts on uh, Swalwell? Swalwell is... I would I would love to see him on the debate stage because he is... You can just tell just beneath the surface. If you Google a picture of Eric Swalwell... You can tell he is, he, he looks legitimately like Biff from Back to the Future. And I can imagine if you push him far enough, he'll begin just saying like, no, you're an idiot. Like that kind of guy. <laughs> no, let me just Google it. He does look that way. Fuck. <laughs> I saw his announcement when he started running for, for president and he said nothing. He spoke for an hour and said nothing. He just talked oh. about being young and riding on his bike and uh, <laughs> like loving small businesses and but he didn't say anything he was just standing there and like the crowd looked like they'd been gathered against their will and it was very depressing <laughs> well they probably were gathered against their will i'd hope not but probably <laughs> all right hmm. jules me yes yeah my, what my next uh candidate? Yes. all right so i have a mayor and i've decided to take all the mayors in the list because of my city planning background hell yeah Unfortunately, nice. I don't have much to talk about this guy. This is uh, Wayne Messam. 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 Yeah. Messam. Wayne Messam. As you can tell by me mispronouncing the name, he's not a very well-known candidate. He is uh, not. He's uh, a black, the first black mayor, I think, of uh, 
Miramar, Florida. He's the infamous Florida man in this uh, cycle. And um, there's not much to say about him, really, because he hasn't really put much out. He does have one uh, actual policy, which is fairly well uh, worked out, and that's uh, his idea to forgive all students' loan debts by uh, repeating the Trump uh, tax cuts, which is a... Uh, very well worked out. If you go to his website, there's one policy. He has like this list of policies he supports, and one of them actually has like references and whatnot. And it's this one, and it has 86 fucking references. There just, you go. <laughs> yeah, this guy did his fucking homework on student debt uh, relief. There's so, a guy that doesn't want to be accused of being financially irresponsible. Yeah, no, this guy has done his research on that. None of his other policies have any references or anything <laughs> this one 86 this is where all the effort went into so good on him uh, aside from that let's see supports impeaching trump uh, supports a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants oh here's one he uh, wants to expunge the criminal records of all those who uh, have like uh, drug crimes like setting weed and stuff and mm-hmm. he wants to resolve uh, their voting rights as well so that's good nice yeah as for his record, um, there's not much really on it, except that he uh, has sued the state of Florida to maintain some municipal gun laws, and he has raised the minimum wage uh, of city workers. That's about all I could find as his mayoral record. Like, that's, that's not good. a lot. That's I good. mean, yeah, but like, I mean, like Buttigieg is not a mayor I'm going to be talking about in a minute. There's like a few more policies I can actually talk about. It. This guy is almost nothing. <laughs> he strikes me from the way you describe him like the Jesse Jackson candidate. I don't know if you remember that Jesse Jackson used to uh, run for Democratic yeah. president every time there was an election and never get any votes. He was like the yeah. civil rights candidate who would talk about uh, people going to prison and he would be super popular on the debate stage but it would never translate to any votes or any publicity or anything because people just didn't care and they were just nah. they just wrote him out of the discussion from the very beginning all the time well that sounds nice the problem is that his criminal uh, rights thing or prison reform thing there, there's no references in those things it's a very short policy thing of like ah uh, support you know sawing uh, voting rights or something but it's not like you know the student thing where it's eighty six fucking references. There's, I, I don't think it really has much prepared for this uh, campaign to be honest. And speaking of his campaign, he uh, has a bit of problems there because uh, a no one knows of him, so no one's attending his events and has not raised any money. The other problem is that he hasn't paid his staff, so many have left the campaign. Oh dear. <laughs> so that's a bit of a problem. Get your shit together, Messam. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, your, your student debt uh, program sounds cool. Sounds cool. I'm Is that also what Warren wants? Uh, yeah, she has like a different thing, I think. I'm going to have to look into that for next uh, time, but yeah, she I also has like I think that's her this. thing too, yeah, that she wants to forgive all student loans. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, I think maybe it was like, uh, depending on like income, where you have to like make some insane amounts before it doesn't get, uh, well, it gets mostly forgiven, but like... Not entirely. I think that's what they do in the UK too. Yeah, I have to. I'm gonna look into that for next time anyway. What's her? Because uh, she's been pumping out policy proposals every fucking week. She it's is, insane. if anything, productive. Yeah, she's very productive. I'm gonna give her that. It's uh, it's great. Yeah. Uh, this guy's a bit less productive, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um. That that's about all my all I have on this guy. There was not a yeah. lot to look into here. I'm afraid. Goat. Go. Tulsi Gabbard. Hey, a name people heard of. Yeah, probably. Aloha. Well, more than the names we've already mentioned. So. Uh, born in uh, American Samoa, which is just a story of its own. It's this, mm-hmm. like, it's part of the US, but it's not part of a state. It's like a colony, essentially. It's a territory, um, they call it, yeah. Yeah, it's a territory. Uh, anyway, her father... Mike Gabbard was a um, a senator for Hawaii. He was a Republican before 2007, and then he switched to the Democratic Party. Woke. She became a member of the Hawaii House of Representatives in 2002, and then a member of the Honolulu City Council in 2011. She, I think, most noteworthy about her is um, her uh, anti-interventionist stance. Mm-hmm. Well... 
her past as a very religious anti-LGBT thing has really, has really also that. gotten her There's caught. Also in. That, yeah. So looking into her anti-interventionist stances, she's not that anti-interventionist. No, God no. <laughs> no. Like I okay. thought that she was like, uh, I mean, not quite a Mike Gravel candidate, like anti-imperialist, but like a actually, you know, anti-intervention, but she's not. No, God, no. Really? No, no, no. I mean, that's that's pretty well established. But it's, it's again, I don't like Tulsi Gabbard at all because I think she's a terrible reactionary force within the Democratic Party. Mm. But also she she's very interesting in the sense that a lot of the things she's saying sounds like they came straight out of the Kremlin and sounds like it's from directive from what Putin would like an American president to do. So there's, I would, I would argue there's probably more of a chance that she's being directly influenced by Russia than Trump was, simply mm. because she has the emotional intelligence to understand when, she's some, when she's being blackmailed or when she's being bribed, and I don't think Trump does. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, looking at her different stances and views, she seems very uh, two-minded on everything. Yeah. She does support increasing uh, income tax to balance the budget. However, she uh, she does not support lowering defense spending in order to balance the budget. She's in the military. She's from a military family as well. Even the military says there's shitloads of waste in there. Yeah. yeah I also mm. know like people still currently serving in the military talking about fucking equipment they have to fix from like 40 years ago, which is <laughs> useless, but still there. So nice yeah. to repair it. it. Takes a lot of money and time, but yeah. She uh, she supports federal spending as a means of promoting economic growth, and she also supports lowering corporate taxes as a means of promoting economic growth. Uh, on her website, votetulsi.com, she says, among other things, we must continue to support our local economy by providing tax credits for businesses that hire workers who have been unemployed for more than six months, eliminate redundant and unnecessary bureaucracy and regulations that make it hard for entrepreneurs and small businesses to start and succeed, end tax mm. rate for corporations that outsource jobs overseas, reduce payroll taxes for small business owners, and support legislation that provides more access and opportunity to capital for small business owners. <laughs> Other than that, she she's pro like Medicare. She's uh, gun control, environment, uh, education. You know, she's pretty liberal in those areas. For, very interestingly, on Vote Smart, which is where I found most of my information on her positions. On the question, do you support the construction of a wall along the Mexican border? Her position is unknown. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I would assume she it's no, but... I mean, they don't just put any random questions. Like I also use that side for a bit. Uh, I think for, uh, well, my final one, uh, no spoilers, but uh, there wasn't asked, you know, uh, that person wasn't asked like, hey, what do you think of the Mexican wall? Yeah. So there's not, that position isn't even listed on like that candidate. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is that a question for... Did someone ask? Uh, it says, despite Tulsi exhaustive and... research, VoteSmart was unable to find information about this candidate's position on uh, the Mexican border wall. She's she's interesting hmm. because she is, like you said, such a mixed bag politically that it wouldn't surprise me at all if she directly was pro the wall. Yeah. Because yeah. she does have some very interesting ideas about the mixing of races and religions, mm -hmm. which uh, mm -hmm. she would do very wisely to not talk too loudly about. Yeah... She does have this bit of a sort of nationalist thing as well going on, so... Yeah. yeah. That, that the wall... Her supporting the wall wouldn't necessarily surprise me. But uh, guess also, what? Also, probably shouldn't she, support it. Guess what? She surfs. So she's cool. <laughs> <laughs> she's um, pro-marijuana legalization for recreational purposes. Who cares? Yeah. She uh, is against military... Uh, force in order to prevent governments hostile to the US from possessing nuclear weapons. Sometimes. Uh, well, it just says no. But underneath that, it does say that she supports increased American intervention in the Mi Middle Eastern conflicts beyond yes. air support. Mm -hmm. So she says, among other things, now this is a bit outdated because ISIS has kind of been defeated, but she does say that uh, the best way to defeat the terrorists is through strategically placed small quick strike special forces and drones. 
strategy that took Osama bin Laden. We also know civilian casualties are much lower, blah, blah, blah. She also wants to work with local partners on the ground, like the Kurds. So this is within the party line, essentially. Yeah. There's nothing, yeah. No, it's not a good party line. <laughs> no, it's the Democrats. <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Better. Yeah. Well, I would hope for better anyway. I shouldn't expect better. I know that much. No. Uh, yeah, so she's, she uh, opposed civil unions and same-sex marriage, but then later changed her tone her stance yeah she, co- she co-sponsored the equality act she went out and did a whole apology tour for having been anti-lgbt and said a bunch of dumb shit which landed yeah. her in even hotter water oh dear. <laughs> she, she, i can't remember exactly what she said but it was very insensitively worded in such a sense mm-hmm. that like a 70 year old would have said it <laughs> but she's a young person who just grew up in a very fundamentalist military religious home yeah mm. so pff, i don't believe for a second that she's not weirded out and very, very against LGBTQ plus people. Yeah. Environmentally, she's uh, pretty, pretty pro environmentalist. Uh, she's been skeptical of the Green New Deal. I think she, she has said that she's for it, but that she has questions regarding it. She's not entirely for it. Uh, she's somewhat critical of Israel when it comes to foreign policy, but not well, somewhat. That's... Yeah, somewhat. Better than a lot of people, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I mean, basically, she's just in line with the United Nations resolutions regarding Israeli settlements right. and that kind of stuff. Right. So it's not, I mean, I guess for America, that's progressive <laughs> to yeah, be in I line guess. with the United Nations. <laughs> the weird thing is, just being in favor of actually actual state at U.S. position is like quite a radical position, even within the Democratic Party, which is yeah. weird and fucked up. Yeah. I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really that much interesting about her, to be perfectly honest. That's more than I ever wanted to know about her positions. Yeah. Well, uh, I learned some <laughs> things. Uh, apparently, sure. she's worse than I thought. So, well, that's disappointing. Yeah. <sighs> I guess. I guess in summary, she's a mixed bag of both progressive and not progressive policies, and even no. foreign policy. Like she says, she's anti-intervention, but she's not. Not really. necessarily. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great. That's Tulsa Gabbard. Hmm. Good old Gabs. So, who's next? Uh, uh, Peter's okay. next. Yes. All right. Good old Tim Ryan. Hey, Tim Ryan. Timmy. Timmy I have Rise. no idea who that is. Yeah, no. Tim really. Ryan. He's someone that <laughs> Wait, I... Wait, hang on, hang on. Audience, have you ever heard of Tim Ryan? Let us know. <laughs> We've asked them so many questions. <laughs> and I want to know all the answers. Send us an email if you know who Tim Ryan is. <laughs> <laughs> Prior no to listening cheating. to this podcast... No cheating and Googling, everyone. Yeah, no, if, uh, if you knew of him prior to this podcast. Just send, if you have heard of Tim Ryan, send us an email just with the word yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll or no. On the yeah, next episode. Just, that's it. Just yes or no. Just yeah. yes or no. We don't want no more words than that. Just yeah. yes or no. We, we get a lot of emails. We've got a backlog, yeah. you know. We've been trying to get through them quickly. So keep the wordiness <laughs> to a minimum. Just and yes keep, or the, no. keep the subject line as the question. And then in the email text itself, just say yes or no. Thank you. I'll just leave Thank the you. text in the email empty. Just subject line, question, <laughs> parentheses, yes. Or exactly. Like so, yeah. yeah. Couldn't be simpler, people. Everyone do that. Uh, okay. So Tim Ryan. Oh, boy. He is one of those people that I think a lot of our listeners might have actually heard about because I've run into him. If if you are like an American politics nerd, at least, you run into him a Mm -hmm. lot because he is an obstructionist jerk within Ah. the Democratic Party. Essentially, he is uh, in in American politics. You you can broadly talk about something called the Delaware Democrats and the Ohio Democrats. And uh, the Delaware Democrats are more well-known now in the public because Joe Biden is one. Mm -hmm. And people have started talking about, well, what does it mean to be a Delaware Democrat? It means being garbage. It means being, like, (laughs) against... Absolute garbage. Yeah, it means means being against tax spending and uh, for uh, uh, welfare for big multinational businesses and making it easier to... Loving credit card companies, just absolutely just sucking them off. Yeah, ex- exactly. That's what it basically means. And in the same sense, you can talk about something called a, an Ohio Democrat. And Tim Ryan is probably the most 
prominent Ohio Democrat. And what hmm. does that mean? That means someone who probably should be a member of the Republican Party, but is hmm. a member of the Democratic Party because there historically has always been a very strong Democratic presence in Ohio, but it's always been much more reactionary and right wing than in the rest of the uh, of the U.S. So a few times now he has challenged people for the leadership of the Democratic Party from the right. And he did so most recently in 2016. Uh, he challenged Nancy Pelosi from the right uh, position in, in 2016, saying we need to, to align ourselves largely with what Trump is saying, kind of like what Hillary said when she said that they shouldn't be so squarely against Trump, that they should uh, approach Hillary. Trump's positions more. That was kind of what he said. And all in all, he is a real bummer of a person. He is such a fucking bummer of a politician. He legitimately once suggested that people who are in terrible poverty should do mindfulness meditation to get out of it. <laughs> what? He said that in an interview. He was asked, what do you think about people who are in... How, how will you help people in terrible, uh, in, in, in terrible poverty? And he said that he had just begun doing mindfulness meditation and he felt like he could do twice as much as he normally could. So he, th he thought that every poor person should just do mindfulness meditation and then they'll get out of poverty. Yeah, do mindfulness meditation so you can work harder, you fucking lazy cunts. Essentially, yeah. Jesus. It reminds me of that Republican who came out against the people who wanted Medicare for all and said, well, they all have iPhones, so maybe instead of buying an iPhone, they should have bought health insurance. Gotcha, liberals. Mm. Like, he's that kind of, of politician, essentially. He's, uh, he has no vision, and he, he should be a, a Republican, but he is a Democrat. He wrote a terrible book that I actually read a little bit of, because uh, the reviews are so terrible, and it's called The Real Food Revolution, Healthy Eating, Green Groceries, and the Return of the American Family Farm. And uh, it sounds, like, very inoffensive, and it kind of is, and he, he just kind of suggests that people should eat healthier without any meaningful policy ideas to back up his suggestions. Uh, but I love that on the back of That's the book, nice. it's, it starts out with, We Americans love our food. It's part of what has made this nation great. <laughs> and that line alone, that line alone, the food being a part of the reason why America is great should tell you everything you need to know about Tim Ryan. Having feels like something had a robot American like. food, I'm not sure great <laughs> is necessarily what I'd use to describe the American uh, cuisine. No, no. He, he is so, <laughs> like, just awful. And he doesn't really have any friends outside of the other Ohio Democrats. So he's, he's just been out in the political cold for the longest time. And he's, he, he, for the longest time, he was a climate change skeptic. And he campaigned against every one of Obama's policies when he was running for the Congress, all the times that Obama was president. So like, he, he's just a dumb, like, Ohio Democrat that isn't worth really thinking about. And luckily, the voters aren't thinking about him either. So that's good. Wow, nice. That's all I have on good old Ryan. He, he, looks, like a, he looks like a stock photo uh, guy. If you Google his name, Tim Ryan, he just looks like someone from a stock photo website. Okay, Jules, your candidate. Right, so I got another mayor here. Yes, Pete Buttigieg. With a Buttigieg, very nice, woo! Yeah, fucking annoying last mayor name. Mayor Pete. So, mayor Pete, let's just go with that, as he suggests, because everyone fucks up his name. Which, <laughs> yeah, it's an annoying name. So, he is... He speaks Norwegian, by the way. He speaks like seven languages, it's quite impressive. Yeah. Also Maltese, Greek, I think another thing... Uh, Maltese is a yes, very interesting uh, Yeah, that is an obscure thing one to learn, but uh, yeah. yeah. What's the population of Malta? It must be like uh, a few I hundred think, thousand. I think, like, not even a few hundred thousand, I think it's like 20, 30 thousand? It's uh, small. 475,000. Really? Fuck, yeah. I know it's like a few, like tens of thousands that live there. Yeah, it's a very Fuck. small country, but that's more well, than almost expected. half a million people live there. Well, that's about, you know, a few hundred thousand more than I expected, so good on you, Malta. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so uh, yeah, he's uh, he knows a lot of languages, he likes to show off that he's uh, well read and all that. He's uh, the mayor of uh, there's a little place called South Bend, Indiana, which has about a hundred thousand people living there, and they actually have some policies he did as his mayoral thing there, which I can you know talk about. So, fuck yeah, oh yeah, he's also gay, that's uh, part of his stick. So, yeah, he, he people like to make fun of him for not having you know policies, and while I largely agree. He does have a page with policies, and while a lot of them are kind of vague and don't really say anything, 
He does have a page, and my next candidate doesn't, so fucking credit to him for at least having a policy page. So, uh, yeah, what does he support? Single-payer healthcare? Maybe. Sort of. Kind of. <laughs> uh, he wants single-payer That's my favorite healthcare, kind of support. but also with private insurance. So, is that really single-payer? What's, what's the private insurance going to do? Like, supplemental things? What's going to be the supplemental coverage? I don't fucking know. Neither does he. He doesn't say it. So, yeah. Maybe single payer, maybe not really. But does Real he think sorry. Trump is a poopy head? Um, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think he does think Trump is a poopy head. Hashtag yes. Hashtag mm. yes, queen. Hashtag uh-huh. my support. But he does have some actually <laughs> interesting things in here. That says one thing in particular. He supports statehood for Puerto Rico and Washington D.C. Yay! That's I nice. think. Uh, again, <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> vaguely written, but he yeah. does think they should deserve full representation, which kind of sounds like statehood, but... Eh. Yeah, Cory Booker not necessarily. Uh, represent, uh, wants statehood for DC, but not Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah fuck Puerto Rico. What has Puerto <laughs> Rico ever done for us? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, so he might support statehood, maybe. And again, a lot of these things are kind of vague. He also supports unions and wants a new Wagner Act, or the 1935 Labour Relations Act, or whatever it's called. It, as far as I know, it's still on the books. It's been amended a few times, so what the fuck that means? I don't know. I have no idea. He doesn't say. It's a bit annoying. But, uh... Well, I mean, he's running for president. Yeah. He doesn't have to have policies. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. Fair that's enough. true. There's uh, some other things. Well, there's, uh, there's an actual policy he does have. Uh, you know the 1964 Civil Rights Act? He wants to expand those protections to LGBT people. So that's an actual policy right there. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, he does actually also have some policy on uh, abortion rights. Um, aside from being pro-choice, he also wants to repeal the Hyde Amendment. And for those unfamiliar, as I was, the Hyde Amendment bars federal funds from being uh, used to fund uh, abortions, except in instances where the life of the mother is at stake. <laughs> so he wants to repeal that. So uh, that's, yay, another policy. Fucking hell, keep them coming, Pete. Um, as Good for the stuff. rest, it has a $15 minimum wage, legal weed, no death penalty, uh, maybe abolish solitary confinement, but not entirely. I mean, you, you, know, you don't want to completely throw out, you know, uh, this policy here, you know, this torture thing. So, uh, yeah, a bit, bit mixed. What is there is kind of mixed. And uh, this is what I could find. There's like, you know, there's, there's like... 40 different things on his website, but all of them have, well, not all of them, but almost all of them have very little, like, actual Substance. wording to it that you can figure out, like, oh, you support this. Like, no, nah, it supports something vague of, like, you know, we need environmental protections. Okay. Such as. Eh? Right. Something. Probably. I don't know. But as for his mayoral record, I actually have things here, so. Um, apparently he did a decentish job there. Some things which are kind of questionable, like him firing uh, the black chief of police, the first black chief of police, after he, the chief of police, uncovered there was a bunch of racism in his own department. And some uh, audio of that uh, got out, so Pete did the responsible thing of firing the, the black guy. Not, not the racists. No, no, leave them in. So that's a bit, uh questionable but did you know he's gay yes he is gay that is true <laughs> he is gay let not uh his record distract you from the fact that he is gay that is true we should and he has a cute dog oh he does have a cute do- he also has a husband keep that in mind aside from Aww. having a dog also has a husband wouldn't it be cute if we had a gay guy in the white house with that a husband so- i know that would be so I? quirky that would be quirky um let's see but he has also done some the thing I liked, which is uh, he redeveloped the infrastructure in uh, his city to make it more, uh, to promote walking and cycling and less uh, car dependency. So that's good. I like that. But he also had this other program, which is not great. It's uh, very mixed. He had this program called A Thousand Homes in a Thousand Days. Now, when you hear that, what do you think? A Thousand Homes in a Thousand Days. Close. Close. Now, you might think 
That's a thousand new homes going to be built. No, 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 no. That's a thousand homes to be demolished. So, Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. So, uh... South Bend, okay, there's a bit of background here. South Bend has uh, been a bit of a decline since the uh, car manufacturing uh, industry left the place, like, I don't know, 70 years ago by now. Um, well, 60. Anyway, so there's a lot of uh, empty houses which have been abandoned, and there's a lot of houses which have been, you know, uh, people still living there, but the conditions are pretty bad. And his plan was, we're going to tear these all down, which isn't that stupid an idea to be honest because uh, there's this whole thing where if you're in an area and there's a lot of like vandalism there then it makes further acts of vandalism and other crimes it's no it's not much as a barrier to doing those as well if like a house is already half apart why not throw a few bricks at it you know it's fun yeah no one's gonna care the house is already <laughs> half apart so it sort of encourages more crime having this sort of um, yeah, shitty surroundings, basically. So there is, like, some thinking here. The thing is, a lot of these houses, you know, people are still living in there. And they were also slated for destruction, <laughs> which is uh, a bit unfortunate. So after a bunch of pushback from the people living in these houses, the uh, program changed a bit, where only 60% of the houses would be destroyed and the other 40% would be... Uh, they would provide funds uh, to the owners to uh, repair them. And uh, the program has been successful-ish, but it was a bit of a gentrification program. Uh, certainly initially it was more or less just a gentrification program, but it has eventually morphed into something which has been more helpful to the people who are living there, uh, mostly uh, poor and black people, or poor black people. Um... Aside from that, not much else to talk about really in terms of his mural record. But uh, he is gay. <laughs> keep that in mind. That is important to keep in mind. And also, the average American couldn't care less about stuff like that. Ah, but so he's I'm not fine. the average oh, yeah. American. I'm a fucking city planner. I care about this. <laughs> yeah, <but> that's, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's because we're nerds. But also, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's, yeah, it's, like, yeah, he's... Like, pretty mixed i think like there's some to the extent he has policies some of it, it's all right others are eh what the fuck is this about mm -hmm. and others it doesn't just doesn't have a policy and then his record is also very mixed yeah all right so uh, yeah mayor pete people danish election corner yes vikings insert eye of the tiger and uh, <laughs> sound of balloons <laughs> popping and uh, sound of people getting beat up. Anyway, Danish election corner. Uh, yeah, so uh, as as most of you probably know, I'm a Danish person, and I live in, in the what? in the Denmark. Yes, I am. Damn, and, I thought uh, you were Norwegian. And uh, as it it might come as a shock, but I'm also uh, interested in politics. Uh, what? This, this is a, a a big day with big revelations. Mm. Um, but but yeah, so so. Denmark has an election right now that's going on, and it's kind of caught wind in the international press as well that we're having an election, because this time we suddenly found out what it looks like when a fascist runs in 2019. Hmm. A proper bona fide fascist is running for parliament, and uh, nobody knows what to do about it. So uh, the, how, the current, how bona fide uh, of a fascist is he? We're talking burning Korans in the street, uh, cool. talking about throwing out people who aren't ethnically Danish going back three generations, uh, talking about how if you've ever received any money from the government, including hospital stays as an immigrant, you should be thrown out the next day. We're talking, talking about uh, uh, being forcibly removed from the country if you refuse to go. Uh, with the military doing so, and if you refuse, then possible death penalty for you. Uh, that kind of fascism. So it's all it's all okay. in good fun. That's yeah, well, he has my vote. Well, I mean, <laughs> you should see his website. It's in Danish, but he has five stances explaining who's Danish and who isn't Danish. Uh, going into eye color, um, ethnicity, your background, your beliefs. You have to. So so his beliefs are. A person like me, he wants to throw into a concentration camp, which is like a fun little flashback to the 20th century that I didn't think we'd see again. Mm. Uh, he doesn't like anyone 
who isn't in his party. And he says that he refuses to, to support any party that isn't his party. And he fully expects to be prime minister within the next 10 years. So he's hmm. not a fun guy. But the scary thing is that he, uh, since he was, he got enough signatures to run for parliament, he's been in all these leader debates and he, he's consistently polled as having enough votes to get into parliament. So he will, with much certainty, be represented in parliament from now on. And so will his party of mostly Nazis. So that's like, I'm not, see the problem, one of the problems I think also is that we've spent 20 years calling right-wing populists Nazis. So when an actual Nazi comes along, uh, no one believes you when you call them a Nazi. But this guy is literally a Nazi and he used to be a member of a Nazi party um, So until he formed his own party. So this is a real guy. Interestingly enough, the consequence on the political landscape has been that every other party in parliament has said, this guy fucking stinks. And they've all kind of ironically started moving towards being in favor of policies that are more favorable to immigrants to distance themselves from what he's saying. So the traditional center right and even the right wing populists are saying, um, we've been too harsh on these immigrants and we should, you know, get in more immigrants into this country. It's almost been like a, a wake up call for all these parties that we've been neglectful in how we talk about other people when someone like him can run for parliament. Um, That's good. I was thinking that just uh, this morning, actually, about how political parties in Sweden are so just absolutely spineless and refuse to stand for anything. Because right. the moment that a party is called Nazi or the, the moment that they're called a communist party or whatever, they suddenly shift their stance. Like the Sweden Democrats... They were started, I mean, firstly, they were founded as a Nazi party, but then they became sort of like a right-wing populist, anti-immigration, anti-EU, anti-political establishment party. Right. And then they got into parliament, and then, you know, people were protesting them and calling them Nazis, and now they're fucking, they're no longer for leaving the EU, they're no longer entirely anti-immigration, they're now fucking part of the establishment uh, like the fucking center party has become social democratic, the social democratic party has become neoliberal, the socialist party has become social democratic, the moderates are having an identity crisis, the Christian democrats have become new Sweden democrats, the green party has become liberals. Like, no one wants to stand for anything anymore. Yeah, it's it's interesting in this very postmodern political scene where having any sincere beliefs are treated as a joke or as insincere yeah. uh, b because of this reaction against honest politics from the 80s and 70s where we, we are afraid of people having real opinions because they come across as in favor of tragedies or uh, homicides or whatever. And um, it's really scary because when no one is, is sincere, the only people who are left to be sincere are people like Rasmus Paludin, who's running for the, who's the fascist. And, the, the, and he has a lot of young voters. A lot of the people who, vote, who will vote for the first time will vote for him because he first got famous on YouTube. And he went out to schools and talked to people and groomed people into voting for his party. So a lot of the young people, I've been doing a lot of canvassing for my political party, the Red Green Alliance, and a lot of the young people we come across say, we hope you die, I like Rasmus Paludin. So he has a lot of young voters on his side, and they're very angry, and they fucking hate social democrats, they hate liberals, and they hate everything that has become of Denmark, and he doesn't believe, and they don't believe that they can trust anyone in the establishment, and they can only trust someone like him, who quote-unquote tells it like it is. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's exactly what people said about Trump as well. It is, yeah. He he doesn't, like, like I know people who said stuff like, I don't agree with everything he says, but at least he doesn't lie. At least he says what he means. Or and whatever. that's the same narrative that is around Rasmus Paludin and Stram Kurs, which is his party. It, yeah. it, is, it is this belief that he won't lie to us because his ideas are so out there that he'll be honest forever <laughs> uh, because he, he doesn't shy away from being sincere. It's such yeah. a, it's, I mean, it's really a perfect in, like indictment of what the social democratic cowardice has led to. Yeah. Um, As you said a moment ago, though, he does lie a lot, though, doesn't he? He lies all the time. He lies all the time, but he does it in such a way that people believe him because he's sincere. And when no one else is sincere or honest or shows any idea of what their values are or what they want to do, then he's the only one that shines through enough for people to say, well, this guy obviously hates these assholes, so I'm going to vote for him. 
Uh, another thing in the Danish election is the current government uh, of the center-right coalition with the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, the Liberal Alliance, all these center-right parties has kind of broken up during this election because of the fascists and the main Liberal Party, uh, the, the one that has the Prime Minister post, has asked the Social Democrats if they want to form a government with him. And this has really shaken the whole political uh, system to its foundations because the Social Democrats traditionally fucking hates the left wing of Denmark. <laughs> but they've always been dependent on them to rule. But they've always, once they've been in power, done 80 to 90 percent of all their legislation with the right wing parties. So they've always been they've always tried to market themselves as these socially conscious Amy Klobuchar type characters who like LGBTQ plus people, but who are also financially conservative or like liberals, essentially. Yeah. Uh, but now they've opened up for maybe doing a grand coalition after the election. And uh, the Social Democrats and the left wing parties are polling really well. So they're keeping all doors open. But I can imagine what's going to happen is uh, this is a maneuver by the current government to kind of make all the left wing parties argue amongst each other internally to uh, to split them up so they can't form a government after the election and we'll have to have another election where hopefully he'll do better because all all mm -hmm. the polls say that right now uh, the 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 left block of the political spectrum stands to get around sixty percent of the vote and the the right block stands for combined about forty percent it's it's if this holds it will be a historically bad election for the right wing of Denmark and a historically <laughs> no. good election for the left wing because there's been so many scandals in the in the current government that people have had enough of it but he's trying to essentially uh, fuck up the social democrats enough and their left wing enough that uh, that that they won't be able to form a government because of his meddling wow so yeah a lot is happening uh oh yeah the current prime minister also uh said that my party was just as bad as rasmus Paludin's party because we're uh, dirty communists <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, we're just as bad as literal fascists. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, you know, I want ethnic cleansing in Denmark and forcing all the fucking brownies out. That's equally bad as, you know, democratic socialism, essentially. Tax rates on the top incomes. Right. And <laughs> the funny <laughs> thing is. Pure equivalent, yeah. Yeah, and the funny thing is the, the thing that we put out, uh, or the party put out, as what they wanted to change instantly if we were in power within the democratic system is entirely financed by like how we would get the money, how we would allocate the money, where we would tax and spend. And even the most prominent right wing newspaper said that, you know, the Red Green Alliance actually has the most thorough financed uh, program of all the political parties in this campaign, but people are treating them like crazy people. And it's just, it's so interesting that. Uh, that people still treat the party as this fringe party. But according to the polls, we're polling at around 10% of the vote now. And uh, it's crazy because just seven years ago, we were polling at 2%. Oh, yeah. right, that's good. The left party is the same. I mean, it's the fourth biggest party now, I think. Yeah, third in Denmark. Yeah, and uh, people still treat it as this like fringe. Like <laughs> They've been in parliament every election since 19... 21 and they're still treated as this political outsider and like fringe and no one wants to work with them and they're like like uh, i know in in municipalities like the representatives from the left party are like bullied by everyone else like, right yeah same here yeah like uh the other representatives don't want to talk to or in, in, in any way recognize the left party representatives that are in the municipal oh, assembly. Oh, Jesus. Right, and the people who hate them the most are the social democrats. They yeah. really hate them. I think because they're afraid that they make the social democrats seem more left-wing than they actually are. And they, they don't mm. want to be associated with this kind of expansive government thinking. They want to be associated with fiscal conservatism and you know le neoliberal policies mixed in with acceptance of minorities and LGBTQ plus people, yeah, which is such bullshit. I mean, the political the political uh, spokesman for the Social Democrats, every chance he gets, he goes into the media and talks about how he doesn't want to work with old communists in this party that I'm a member <laughs> of, and he would much <laughs> rather he, he said he'd much rather be in opposition than work with the old communists. Yeah. So I mean, uh, fuck the Social Democrats. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I hate them with a burning passion.
They mm. sound pretty fucking garbage. Yeah, but uh, Meta is probably the the leader of the Social Democrats. She's probably going to be the Prime Minister one way or another after the election. So we'll see how mm. that goes. Uh, right. there's, al- there's already talk in my party that uh, uh, they want to be much more combative towards the Social Democrats this time when it comes to creating a government program for what they want to do. And if the Social Democrats refuse to talk to them, they won't support the government and will be thrown into another election immediately after. Yeah. So. Mm. Okay. It'll be interesting to see That's what some happens. Leverage. Hopefully, I mean, unless they then choose to just walk into the arms of the Liberal Party, mm. yeah. Which historically has proven to be a terrible idea because it all the coalition governments between Social Democrats and Liberals have always led to you know fleeing voters and more marginalized groups growing stronger. Well, interesting times ahead. Yeah, so I'm doing a lot of uh, political work at the moment. A lot of I have a candidate that I'm uh, campaigning for. If you live in in northern Denmark uh, and listen to this, come say hi. We're in Alborg and uh, vote for Sinem Demir, who's my candidate. She's great and um, she's actually a Marxist, so that's good. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa you're fucking uh, giving out too much information, perhaps. No, Scaring no, she's off probably the a Marxist. She's, she's a proud <laughs> Marxist, and she ah, right. has a lot of problems. One of the reasons I'm spending so much time working on her campaign is that the official party in Copenhagen doesn't want to give her the support that she needs, despite yeah. her being the, one of the most popular candidates internally in the party and mm. uh, number two on the list up here. And it looks like she's going to get into parliament, but it will take a lot of work. So Cool. Mm. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers yeah, crossed. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's all I have right now. For, oh, final thing. Final thing, we actually have two elections right now in Denmark. We have the EU election, like the rest of you do, uh, on the 26th. We have the election for parliament on the 5th of June. Yeah, so a a a week or so later. And a lot of people are talking about how there's currently a lot of job openings at the EU. So they're saying he put the the European election... um, ahead of the popular election because if he loses he can just go immediately to the people who were elected into the eu and say okay recommend me for a job and i'll take it and then he can fuck off to the eu and uh and just <laughs> and, and and just leave denmark forever oh yeah that's a uh, good planning ahead yeah <laughs> so it's all strategic he he's known that he doesn't have much of a chance hmm. uh since the beginning of this campaign his his party is is polling at a historically low percentage point in terms of support. So, I see. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's a it's a big mess, and the rhetoric is awful, and people are awful to each other. But uh, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, we're gonna have a very good election. This is the end of Danish election corner. Uh, <laughs> return of the theme from before with. Uh, uh, Eye of the Tiger, balloons popping, uh, people getting beat up on the street, ending with Rolling Stones, Street Fighting Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So yeah, tune in next time where we go through, I guess, another six of the candidates or so. Not- bye now. Bye. Well, bye everyone. Bye. Good night.